Hello and welcome to Premiere Gal. Today is another Tuesday tutorial and I'm going to teach you how to make two clips that were shot on two completely different cameras look the same and look better together. I'll be giving you some Lumetri color tips and how to not use and use the new color matching feature correctly in the latest release of Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Also, shout out to filmimpact.net for sponsoring this video. They just released a new awesome transition pack for Premiere Pro CC called Transition Pack 4. This pack includes 10 new transitions, including a kaleidoscope transition, a stretch wipe, a grunge transition, a slick new page peel, much groovier than Premiere Pro's built-in peel, a warp, lens blur, a slice, a split, a plateau wipe, and a flicker. All you have to do is drag and drop the transitions between clips and bam, your video has a style. You can get 10% off any Film Impact plugin or bundle using the links in the description box below, which has my code PremiereGal10 already applied. All right, so let's get into this tutorial. So here in my timeline, I have the Sony a7S shot of Chuck's dog, and then I have the same dog shot on the Nikon D750. And shout out to Chuck for sharing this footage of his dog for this tutorial. You can see that they look vastly different. The Sony is almost a bit overexposed and the Nikon is much darker. Now, before we apply the new color matching effect, we need to correct them before we can match the color. You can see that if I turn on comparison mode and try and apply a match, it just doesn't do anything. So first, let's start with correction in the Sony shot. First, make sure you have the Lumetri scopes window open and make sure you have the Luma waveform visible to illustrate the brightness of the image. Here in the basic correction from Lumetri, we can drop the exposure a bit to reduce some of the clipping up at the top near 100 in the Luma waveform. And by the way, if you want to learn how to read Lumetri scopes, you can watch my full Lumetri scopes color correction tutorial for free here on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description box below. Let's also increase the contrast here to 30 and I'll crush the blacks just a bit around, let's say 15 to drop the Luma down to zero here in the graph. So there's even more contrast. And now if we turn the effects on and off here from the Lumetri color panel, you can see the shot looks better. Lastly, I can see that the blue is a bit lower than the red and greens from the RGB parade here in Lumetri scopes. So to fix that, let's grab the white balance selector and let's grab the white from the dog's forehead. See how it just popped up to be more balanced with the red and green? And lastly, let's add in some vibrancy from the creative tab just to give the shot some more life. Now onto the Nikon shot. Now this is very dark, so we need to bump up the exposure, let's say to around two. And let's also pump out those shadows cause it's way too dark. Let's bring it all the way up, let's say to 75. Now that looks better. And we should add in just a tad bit of contrast as well. So now if I turn the effects on and off, you can see it looks a heck of a lot better. And now let's turn on comparison view from the program panel by clicking on that double comparison icon and on the left is the Sony and on the right is the Nikon and you can see that the Sony shot is more of a green tone and the Nikon has a bit more life to it on the right. So the left here is the reference shot, the shot we're matching the current frame on the right too. So let's switch it, let's match the shot to the Nikon. So let's click that arrow here underneath the reference shot to change it from the Sony shot to the Nikon shot as the reference. And then using the current time indicator, the CTI here in the timeline, let's change the current frame to be a frame from the Sony shot. Then go to color wheels and match, and I'm going to leave face detection on just to see if it works on the dog, and then click apply match. And bam, you can see that the color wheels adjusted slightly and it gave the Sony tone more of a pinkish tint to match the Nikon shot. So that's how you should use color matching correctly. You can't just put two vastly different shots in the timeline and then go to comparison mode and expect the color match to work 
magically. It just won't work that way. So you still need to correct first to make the color match worth its time. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you are notified when I make new videos every week. In the meantime, drop a coin in my hat to help crowdfund this channel on Patreon and you can get some pretty cool Premiere Pro templates as rewards that I design myself. Many thanks in advance and I will see you very soon. Bye.